So hi, uh, today we will see the uh, current waveforms in three-phase full bridge uh, rectifier. So let's uh, remember the voltage waveform. So let's say these are the line-to-line -line voltages. line-to-line -line voltages. So our output voltage was basically jumping from one line-to-line -line voltage to another. And we have seen in the previous lecture that there are basically uh, six different uh, possibilities for those ones. So let's write down, for example, VAB. And the next one will can be VAC. And the other one can be V B C and V B A and V C A and V C B. So let's check if that one is makes sense. So if this is V A B, so V B A is uh, directly inverted version of that one. So what I want to what I want to see is what is the current drawn uh, from from the grid. So let's say I want to draw the phase A current, okay, IA current. So let's uh, go back a couple of slides. And if you remember, uh, I want to now plot the phase A current. So as you can see, if, if that A uh, phase is open any cases it can be through D1 so it can be V A B voltage or V A C voltage through here that means I am drawing a positive voltage so I A is let's say larger than zero if uh, V uh, A B or V A C is conducting I mean not conducting but let me say if you are seeing at that point VAB that means the current is flowing through phase A and coming back from phase B so that means IA is positive so let's ignore those things and I can again to simplify I will have some uh, ID current so and I can say IA is uh, in the negative direction so that means D4 uh, D4 is conducting Okay, so when this is the case uh, that I, I A is negative if we have VBA or VCA at the output. So that means if you have VBA, so let me get the plot one, so you have that voltage coming through the VB and going back through IA. And the other possibility can be, uh, let me clean those things a little bit. So basically there is another uh, possibility where uh, we have uh, at the output voltage we can have VBC or VCB. So in that case you don't have any A phase voltages and then you have basically uh, zero current. So in this case, for example, if you see VBC voltage at the output, then that means the, let me use the red again. So the output is coming through here, okay, and going back through that loop. And in that loop, you see VBC. And in that case, uh, neither D1 or D4 are not in conduction. So that makes IA is equal to zero. So I have basically uh, three possibilities. Either I can have positive current and uh, when we have these line to line voltages or I ha can have negative uh, current when we have these voltages or I have zero voltage if I have BC or CB voltages. So let's uh, go back to the figure we just drove. So let's uh, try to plot those things based on that one, right? So whenever I have the A and A, so I will have a positive current and if the, we 
model it with some uh, current source then I will have ID and then I don't have any conducting because I have the VB and VC phases so in this range okay so in this range I will have zero current and after that I have A at the second uh, rank so that means my current is flowing in the negative direction from the uh, grid so I will have a negative current down to here right so then here again it will be zero voltage so you will have you know that kind of uh, waveform so it's like a square waveform um, but not like conducting like 180 degrees as in a single phase and remember we have one two three four five six possibilities so each of those uh, blocks are 60 degrees right so I can say that diode or that phase is in positive conduction for 120 degrees then it is off for 60 degrees then it is negative for 120 degrees then again uh, off for 60 degrees and this is the you know typical waveform and of course here I assumed uh, output is uh, DC current okay so of course the shape will be uh, modified a little bit if this is an RL load or if it is a capacitive load whatever but the biggest difference from a single phase rectifier is now instead of conducting like 180 positive and 180 negative I am conducting 120 positive and some 60 degrees for zero and then 120 negative and it goes like that right so let's have a look at the overall uh, current waveforms so we just uh, plot the 120 for the phase A this is phase A this is phase B and this is phase C and all of them like are shifted 120 degrees so if you look figure uh, phase A and B current so that starts conducting then it stops 120 degrees later then this starts conducting and then the other one is uh, shifted 120 degrees from phase B okay so the important thing if you look at any instant if you look at any instant let's look at at that instant so here I have the positive current at phase A and I have negative current at phase B and I have zero current at uh, phase C or if I look at a different instant so let's look at here so here I have zero at phase A and I have positive at phase B and I have negative at phase C so at any instant one of the phases is positive one of the phases is negative and the other one is zero and actually if you think about the circuit uh, that makes sense okay so at any instant at any instant so my current uh, so my current let's say is flowing through here and coming back let's say through here right so I have positive current at phase A I have negative current at phase C and B is not conducting at that time so I have some alternating currents uh, going between uh, phases so what is the uh, consequence of that one right so I have that waveform so how which harmonics we have in this waveform so of course I have uh, the fundamental right so and you can see it is symmetrical around those things and you will have you will have some kind of harmonics like that and of course it doesn't touch us here uh, I we can we can calculate the magnitude of the first harmonic but now we have the first harmonic and of course it is not as big as the uh, full square waveform which is 4 over pi so this could, this should be 
you know, less than 4 over pi. Uh, we can we can calculate that one. But I would like to uh, emphasize if there is any third harmonics in that waveform or not. So how can you find any third harmonics? So let's say uh, if you remember from the previous lecture, what was our uh, third harmonic third harmonic coefficient? You basically multiplied multiply that waveform with a you know, third harmonic and you integrate it either right, from uh, pi minus pi to pi and basically the if that integral is zero okay this, this let's have the a3 for example right and if you multiply it with the third uh, uh, with the sinusoid with the uh, three times of the fundamental then you can find the uh, third uh, harmonic coefficient for that wave so let's try to have a look at of course you can do it uh, trigonometrically um, but I think uh, understanding it ge geometrically is much more useful so this is our waveform and I will draw a third harmonic waveform in here right so it will be something like that let me continue so here you have the first cycle here you have the second cycle here you have the third cycle so if this is like your fundamental time and this is a waveform of three times of your fundamental right so what happens if i multiply multiply our current waveform multiply our current waveform with that sinusoid so of course if this is id then i will have the same shape multiplied with id so i have some positive region here so at that instant i have a still positive current but the sinusoidal is negative so i have negative current but so they cancel each other right then afterwards i have a zero region and i am multiplying that zero region with that one which they cancels itself and you have zero okay here you have negative and multiplied with negative so you still have positive and here the sinusoidal is positive but now you have a negative current so they they are negative so they cancel each other and here you have again zero volt so basically if you try to calculate right either from 0 to 2 pi it's a, a symmetrical uh, continuous waveform it doesn't make any difference so if you multiply ia times sine 3 omega t right that gives you zero and that means there is no third order harmonics right so there is no third order harmonics in that waveform so we have the fundamental harmonic and we don't have a second harmonic and actually let's uh, we can do the second harmonic why we don't have any second harmonic in that one so we can prove it same way so in this in this time right i am multiplying it with uh, twice right something like that anyway, it's not perfect but you get the idea so you have that positive region right and that is negative region so that one and that one cancels each other right and if you look that one is symmetrical with that one and this is positive negative this is negative negative so they, they are canceling each other so that part is zero that part is zero so you can still integrate it for the second harmonic and you will have zero coefficient for the second harmonic and that's the case for all AC signals if they are you know symmetrical at the positive and negative region so and you can do the uh, you can do the analysis for the fifth harmonic and you can find a non-zero uh, fifth harmonic coefficient so actually if you just calculate all those harmonics of that waveform 
what you will find is right you will have the fundamental component then one fifth of the fundamental component at the fifth harmonic and then you will have the seventh harmonic and there is no ninth harmonic then you will have 11th harmonic and uh, 13th harmonic so there are in that waveform there are no third order harmonics so suddenly you know your in a single phase rectifier in a single phase rectifier so you have 50 hertz right then the 150 hertz third harmonic then uh, fifth harmonic 250 hertz and this uh, seventh harmonic 350 hertz something like that but if you look at the at three phase rectifier current okay you will have the 50 hertz then you don't have that component you have 150 hertz then you have 350 hertz so actually that is the waveform you need to you know obtain as a sinusoidal current so you want to get rid of those harmonics so you can see it is easier to filter it is easier to filter a three phase rectifier current because the first harmonic the lowest harmonic that you need to get rid of is 250 not 150 okay so as an exercise as an exercise actually I leave it to you okay I leave it to you if let's say this is one amp okay what should be the the peak of the first harmonic and again what is the RMS of that current waveform okay I want you to calculate the RMS current of that waveform and the peak value of the first uh, harmonic